Welcome back to another edition of Zero Blog 30. And today we have three rounds of the magazine. Round number one, are U.S. generals and top officials too stupid to have phones? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I would initially say yes. Oh, round okay. two, there's two politicians from Rhode Island who went to Philly on a work trip and got their careers cracked like the old Liberty Bell, folks. And finally, round number three, we're going to do some good initiative, bad judgment. There's a 62-year-old Plaxico Burris. There's a flight attendant bomb threat, and there's one more that I don't remember off the top of my head, but it's good, too. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and we're going to start all that right now. So before we get going in the actual story, I wanted to remind everybody that olds are terrible. Like, just in mm. a, just as a just that as general rule, olds, you got to keep them away from technology. I mean, even... I told my mom several times, stop sharing all these little fly by night Facebook groups. Eventually they're going to be <laughs> having your Facebook profile with like a link that says young teens twerk on dude. And then you're going to get everybody's information hacked. Stop it, mom. I think you guys probably have that too, where you look at your parents and you're like, please stop being so old. Yes. And my parents 55 and up every now and then they'll show me another resident's Facebook and they'll ask me, like, look at this interaction. Are they getting scammed right now? And I'm like, yes, your neighbor is getting scammed. <laughs> I'm like, type in this message that this weird man sent her into Google and you'll see it like proliferate. Like, yeah, I probably not explaining that right, but you just see it. No, I mean, area. that's that's the way it is, like with these yeah. old folks, like even that we see it all the time with older veterans that are targeted with like the Camp Lejeune water money, like with yeah. the help me get my VA claims. Like the PACT Act had so many more pop up that you're trying to help people. My really parents just got, got money. by a couple of years ago by someone saying, this is Apple. We need access into your computer. And they were like, okay. And yeah. then like, oh, Steve, shit. is this Steve? Yeah. So <laughs> we we take Steve, it for granted though, Steve because <laughs> not only like we, we grew up with technology even before the technology that it is now, like growing up with video games, even kind of got our brains working. I think, in such a way that we're more comfortable around technology. So then you morph into instant messenger and then to phones, what they are today. And we were, you know, we're like Bane. We were like born into the darkness and it's just comfortable for us. So it's almost not their fault because think about it. Think about how foreign all this stuff is for our parents and, and, and people there. And still age. get got sometimes. We had people at our office get got. So, <laughs> yeah. you know. with so what's yeah, happening? Correct, yeah. But I would say this, <laughs> even with the olds, you would expect generals and top officials to be a little more on top of things. So what's going but on? But you don't that? think of that that way, right? Like, I think that's one of the big things with Biden being like 81 years old and Trump being 78. Like, they don't know these little tricks of the trade. Like, what's yeah, because going on? They don't they're know. Just, they're even further removed from it because yeah. they have all these staffers that just tell them what they need to know. So they don't even have any idea which end is up. They have no idea what's going on with technology. And I've, I I, think I've talked about it on here before with Bear Grylls. Whenever he went out with President Obama and President Obama only had a brick phone. Yes. Like, what kind of phone is that? He's like, this is the only phone that they'll let me have. Like, I'm not yeah. allowed to have apps yeah. or anything. Like, you but don't think know. About that. You don't know what you don't know. If we didn't do th this for a living, would you trade that in? Would you trade your phone just to be kind of more off the grid? No. Yes. I would not. So I'll tell you what's going on though with the generals and stuff. Like what's all right. So let's, yeah, let's get into that story. <laughs> okay. So the generals are doing, Kate, awesome. Kate clearly just wants to get out of here and go to the beach. So let's, no. let's move things no, along. Katie context likes a little bit of context. And then we get into the actual And then we story. get into, yeah. I know, I don't want to dilly. We no, we don't dilly dally. Topic. We just, I love we dilly just dally. go right in it. I yeah. stopped myself right there. Don't want, I've been giving patrol base a lot a lot of money. <laughs> so, <laughs> so. Barstool Sports recognizes that VFW posts have been pillars of support in their communities for decades. In partnership with New Amsterdam Vodka, Barstool is offering much-needed assistance to support the renovation of a selected VFW's common area. Grant applications are now open, and you can apply by going to barstoolsports.com slash wins for warriors. We've also made some custom undefeated since 1776 t-shirts, and those are available for purchase at the Barstool Sports Store, and they're great. I think they're legit the best sport, the best shirts that we've made so far. I really, really like them. 100% the of the net proceeds will be donated to Barstool Sports Mission to make a difference for veterans so that they can you can learn more by going to barstoolsports.com slash wins for warriors. Again, grant applications are now open 
Visit barstoolsports.com slash wins for warriors to learn more. And this is something that whenever it actually gets going, if you're the one that is applying for the grants, ZVT is all going to come out. We're going to help build. We're going to help do all that stuff. We're going to create some content. So if you want to be involved in that, go to barstoolsports.com slash wins for warriors. You're going to learn about all that stuff and see all the good stuff that VFW is doing. It's not just about hanging out. It's about their legislative priorities and what they're doing. One of those is the major Richard Starr Act, which got some good news that that it's actually going to go for a vote. They have all of the different support they need in both houses of the uh, Congress. The Senate has approved it essentially. They are, there's enough signers on the House side. There's enough signers on the Senate side. So all we need is to actually have a vote on both sides and then the president to sign off on it. And a lot of that happened because of the leadership at the VFW, just a stone cold fact. So if you want to be involved in that stuff and helping the VFW's mission, again, go to Barstool Sports dot com slash wins for warriors uh all right what do we have here kate there's an article that came out there's a, i had never heard of this battalion that is designed essentially to help general and other top officials whenever they leave the government so that they won't get duped because there's one word that really sticks out here in this entire organization to me go ahead kate um so this is confusing to read but um basically it's called protective services field office and the protective intelligence branch. And like Chap said, their whole job is to help mitigate online threats and the identification. They help identify fraudulent accounts. They help identify any phishing scams, any scams that are directed, I guess, at the DOD as a whole. Um, and especially when it comes to high-risk personnel, which are our most senior people who have the most access to our secret accounts. Um, what stood out to you? What was the thing that stood out to you there? So that whole thing is just like a primer that there is this organization within the DOD that's called the Protective Services Field Office and the Protective Intelligence Branch, which essentially is assigned to senior level leaders whenever they're getting out of the military, they're getting out of government service because they want to have them protected. Mark Milley, is that, that's it, right? Milley? Yep. Oh, Milley. good. Yep. I, I always messed it up. Remember Miley or Milley? So that's <laughs> where we get to this point where Mark Milley, go ahead, Kate. Okay. Um, when in the chair of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Mark Milley enters into his scheduled retirement later this year, one of the perks will include a personal security detail to protect him from threats, including embarrassment, the threat of embarrassment. I actually think that is what it's about. Nothing to do with threats. It's all about embarrassment. All of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and being put in an embarrassing position, especially when you're a high ranking military officer or retired one makes you very vulnerable to be blackmailed. It makes you very vulnerable to like divulge secrets and the stuff you learned or your thing because nobody wants to have their career forgotten because everyone just remembers you for some dumb thing you did online afterwards. Yeah. So the U.S. Army Protective Services Battalion is safeguarding the top military brass. Um, they prevent high-ranking military officers from assassination, kidnapping, injury, or embarrassment. The man, the services mandate has expanded to include monitoring their social media for direct, indirect, and veiled threats, identifying negative sentiment towards its wards. Um, and so basically, if they notice that some sexy lady keeps re reply guying to Mark Milley, they're going to be like, Mark, don't do it. Stay away from <laughs> Stacy 6969. Don't and you know, the military is not exactly proactive. This is a reactive thing. So there must have been several generals, maybe it even flew under the radar, but the media didn't find it, where they're like, if we don't get a handle on these old generals, we're about to be in a well, world of hurt. You're right, because what else do you have a lot of once you retire? Time. Time, so you're yeah. just sitting there on your phone going deeper than you normally would. Wanting well, look, to who still is it? Who is in QAnon yes. now? General Flynn? Yeah, General Flynn. And he's like, the head of the entire NSA. It's an embarrassment. It really um, is. And the country's national security machinery has become increasingly focused on social media, particularly, speaking of Flynn, disinformation. <laughs> so people also look to these high-ranking generals and trust them. So if you have a high-ranking general like Flynn going out there and being like, the vaccine gave me a third penis. We're like, wait, you already had yeah. a second one? What's going yeah. on there? But like, <laughs> it, it's a little concerning. And why are they doing this? Because they're old. And we talked about that at length before we hopped in the topic, but- the olds, they just... And you would think people that are in high-level leadership like that, like top U.S. officials in the military, top U.S. officials in government, would have people that they could bounce these ideas off. Is this real? Is it not real? 
And not only that, but they're the ones that are in charge of these policies. Like we see yeah. these old ass senators, these old Republican or these old representatives is the word I was looking for. These old representatives that are sitting in meetings with like Twitter and Reddit and Facebook that are asking questions that the normal listener who is like millennial or younger listens. They're like, that. what are you even asking? That doesn't even yeah. make sense what you're asking because they have no idea so i listed a couple examples of these people that are what are make who are making the bad decisions and why they need their phones monitor and the first one is old mitch mcconnell what's that one kate yeah so the best parody contains elements of truth which might explain how the military's answer to the onion suckered the senate's republican leader um meet the duffel blog and the duffel blog i that's how i got my start writing was for the duffel blog back in the yep. day it was like the military's version of the onion um national security people military members they read it just for fun they have really fun headlines um anyone who enjoys humor really so there was this piece about uh the headline was syria hosting iraq war reenactors and <laughs> there was one about um google street view prius getting blown up in kandahar um <laughs> just all sorts of funny fake stories um founded in 1797 blah 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 um but there's like no way usually like i've never read one of those headlines and thought it was real it's like very clearly parody but in 2012 mitch mcconnell wrote to elizabeth king the pentagon's congressional liaison he was saying I, i'm writing on behalf of a constituent who has contacted me regarding guantanamo bay prisoners receiving post 9 11 gi bill benefits and so <laughs> it was a duffel blog article and so she had to reply yeah that's the duffel blog it's not real mitch that's not a real i mean thing. but that's the guy at the he was the senate majority leader at the time like so all of the bills that come across he has to approve those and put them like on the schedule all these different, like getting Supreme Court justices confirmed, like that goes through their office in order to get them on the table. Like all these, and you think that Gitmo prisoners are getting GI Bill benefits? Well, I, and you're right. Like the, all that would take be to for old Mitch to say to one of his staffers who's under the age of 40, like, wait a second, is this, what's this website? Is this, and then they could just easily explain it. I think you have... A perfect storm, though, because one, they're old, as we've already pointed out. Two, I don't think you get to be an elected official, especially older, without like some sense of self worth that you think like you're the smartest person in the room every oh, time you're absolutely. in the room. Absolutely. Yeah. So the requirement of um, swallowing your pride it would take to ask somebody, wait, is this real? Is it's very high, it is. which I think they, they would probably a lot of times avoid. So that's how you get yourself in a situation like this. And it happens to all of us. I mean, there, but yes. the I've been caught online getting duped by a video. I think that's part of the it's one of the biggest concerns you have as a blogger, like in stuff that we talk about now, like important shit is getting caught blogging like a, a story that's mm -hmm. clearly fake. Happened to me when I first started. There is this video that i thought was insane it was like this hawk and they were at like a lake this family was picnicking at this lake and this hawk comes really close to this family and everybody's like oh my god the hawk swoops down by the water and then comes back and there's like a snake dangling in its mouth and the hawk goes around and then it drops the snake out of its mouth onto the picnic table and everybody freaks out and it looks so real to me when i first saw it looking on my laptop real quick need another blog write something like five minutes post it people are like this is fake this, how could you possibly believe this is real you idiot you're so oh. stupid how could you possibly and they're right i'm an idiot so it mm. happens that happens, it happens. It happened with u.s secretary of defense james mattis old mad dog oh. the Re theranos with <laughs> the woman who talked like this elizabeth holmes um <laughs> the retired four-star general testified that he admired holmes he came to believe in her promise of the Silicon Valley startup revolutionizing blood testing. And then turns out the whole thing basically was a scam. The whole thing was fake. She just made everything up and he got got like, and people trusted and invested in, in Theranos because James Mattis. Well, right. but, but he was, he was later in the game. There were other people like when, like George Schultz, a former secretary sure, of state is already yeah. on the board. You're like, well, he's probably already vetted this. So I'm good. And then, yeah, on down the line with all the other folks that, gave it its blessing yeah he put eighty five thousand dollars of his own money into it um and turns out she was bilking more than 700 million from investors and it's like whoops uh so yeah 
embarrassing. Yeah, and I mean, if Mattis is going to get duped like that, I think everybody respected him for what he accomplished in the military. And one of the things that he was most well known for is being smart, like the warrior yeah. monk. He was one of the mm. ones that was looked at because he was philosophical, he was tactical, all those different things. But he got duped by this woman who said that she could test everything from your blood, which is not true at all. So overall, with this department that they've established, I'm a firm believer in it. I yes. think that they should. If you are going to be in government, I think over the age of 65 at this point, maybe even 60, you have to unlock your phone and let a government agency have complete access to it because yeah. you just don't know what you're doing. You have no Agreed. responsibility for technical technological stuff at all. None. Yeah. Agreed. All right, let's move on to round number two. What's going on in Rhode Island? Uh if you suffer from symptoms of ADHD, lack of focus, no productivity, your brain is constantly wandering, you need to check out Proper Wild's clean all-day energy shots. Proper Wild uses organic caffeine stacked with L-theanine, which has clinically been shown to boost your energy, focus, and productivity without the jitters of a crash. No preservatives, no artificial sweeteners, no horrible chemicals, just a natural tasting energy shot with clean ingredients that work. Listen, I've been starting to take these in the morning before I start my day. My brain is firing on all cylinders. I cannot tell you more to get Proper Wild, all right? So go to properwild.com slash barstool to try Proper Wild at 30% off. That's properwild.com slash barstool. Um so I live Fourth of July is coming up, so why not tell a quick Philadelphia story, birthplace of uh of the of America, you know? Wow, but cocky. took two politicians down <laughs> in Rhode Island. So I just love this story. The emails just came out. So this happened back in March, but the emails just finally came out and it made huge news in Rhode Island. Wait, and is this about Hillary Clinton? But, so back in March, <laughs> these two politicians, and they weren't big time, they weren't like senators or representatives, they were like smaller time in Rhode Island's politics, um, they went down to Philly and they basically destroyed their careers in one day. Nice. So how quick met up with some Lance corporals, South Philadelphia <laughs> had this huge vocational high school called Bach vocational high school. And it was sitting empty for years. This massive, like look like a castle. And finally this investor came in this investor group, this woman, Lindsay Scanapicho. She came in, Philly area lady, with Scout Limited or Scout Limited, and was like, I'm gonna redo this building. She's a big time developer, but only like in her 20s. She broke up the building, like still big, beautiful building, but inside, really low rent for entrepreneurs, nonprofits, artists. It became this really awesome, like like an Etsy mall almost. Like you could go inside and find artisanal light bulbs and uh, it sounds really like your cool. kind of place. Yeah, like, that's I was your thinking kind the of exact place. same. This is the place you would take us. Be like, no, guys, I swear it's cool. Yeah, but we'll just go successful. right past the glass walls and we'll go here. <laughs> and then they turned the entire roof of the school into this awesome restaurant and bar with amazing views of the whole city. Like, really cool. And it, it's so successful since it opened. It's been open for years now. And it's such a success that um, other cities are trying to do the same thing. So Rhode Island and Providence has the Cranston Street Armory, this old military armory. And you know, those buildings are massive. Yeah. And a lot of them are sitting empty now. And they're like, we want to do what Philly did with Bach Invitational to this armory. We want to make it a cool hub of sure. Providence. So they send, they're like, hey, Philly, can we send a couple guys down to hang out with that developer to tour the building and check it out and see if, do we really want to invest millions of dollars in the company that did Bach Invitational to come up and do this? So- they sent them. So Rhode Island's David Patton, the state director of property management, and James Thorson, the state director of administration, they came in hot. Like they, this was their first time ever allowed to go on a work trip and ever leave <laughs> Rhode Island. And picture two men in there. I was like that my first time going TDY too. <laughs> it's yeah. so much fun. Two wait, old... I don't have to pay for any of this? <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, wait till you hear this. T picture two old guys in their 50s with like wire rimmed glasses, gray hair, bald spots, like total squares. Okay. Here's how they started. At midnight, and they were just coming down for one day. At midnight before the tour, Patton texted Scanapicho, this woman in her, this young woman who's like crushing it down in Philly with this development firm, texts her personally, the head of this major firm. 
um, because she's going to be overseeing the redevelopment of this building in Providence now if, if the company gets the contract. He texts her this, please have fresh coffee with milk and sugar and the best croissant in Philadelphia ready for me upon arrival. That is not what I was expecting. Director Thornton, Director Thornton likes Diet Coke. Have a cold six pack waiting on the table in your conference room. You have three hours to convince us to give you $55 million. In the morning, as the Do tour these motherfuckers began, think they're Creed in fucking 1999? Yes. <laughs> in the morning, as the tour began, Patton commented on Scapa- Scanapichos. I'm probably butchering her Scanapicho. last name. Scanapicho. Scanapicho. He commented her on her appearance saying, Lindsay, where's your husband? Good thing you're married or I would move to Philadelphia. If I knew your husband <laughs> wasn't going to be here, I would have come last night. Inappropriate. It, it keeps getting worse. During the tour, they visit the Jefferson Weiss Wellness Center. It's a huge hub for Philly's refugee and immigrant communities. They're actually doing a lot of work um, helping with Afghan immigrants coming in right now. And Mark Altschuler, he's the guy, the clinical director who runs it. Patton says to him, when you go to the bars at night, you must have to swat off the women. Um, Starts to suggest he's got like an exotic look to him and says, you've got some ethnicity in you, don't you? To this guy who runs this wonderful charity he finally keeps asking him are you italian are you this are you that and finally all true is like i'm i'm jewish okay and Patton says oh mazel tov like in a really creepy tone like knew he was jewish the whole time and just wanted him to say it then the group visits remember diodora the soccer company yeah sure I feel like in middle school, kids would wear the Diodora soccer shorts. Oh, yeah, shirt. that's where the, yeah, the shorts, too. Shorts are It's hot Italian business. sportswear, and they have an office in this Bach vocational school in Philly. Um, Patton asked for a free pair of sneakers, then asked, are these made in China? I hope not, because I really hate China. He then turns to an Asian-American staffer in the room and says, no offense, hon. Oh, oh my God. God. Oh, wait, it gets worse. This what? is like a Mad Men parody. Yeah, yeah. Irwin's, that's the bar and restaurant on the top floor. It's only open for dinner. All week, it's only ever open for dinner. Which Patton is how you Thornton, know a place is good. Like, that's they, a good place. They demand lunch there. They said, well, can you call in a favor if you want 55 million bucks? They said to Scanapiccio for the... So, she's like, these guys like are Like, it's the their bars. money. Right. I right. was thinking the exact same thing. Like, it's their, they're writing a check. Well, the restaurant opened. They opened just for lunch for these two guys. And it turns out because it's in an old school, part of the aesthetic of the restaurant is that there's graffiti on the walls and like high school. Mm-hmm. school. Right. And they said it looks like it was vandalized just before our arrival. Um, they were like upset with the decor of the restaurant. And even though they opened specifically for them, these two guys, they said, from vegan cheese to hand blown glass to sneakers, almost every tenant they visited in the building, they asked for freebies and they ended up walking out with huge badges. And Thornson said, I don't have to declare this right. To which Patton replied, ah, it's de minimis, which is state house shorthand for it's low enough in value. We don't have to note it. Mm-hmm. Um, then Patton told a, a passerby outside the building that their dog was overweight, which he knows because he used to train dogs. <laughs> okay, so these two guys um why would you take a shot at the dog that's the most unnecessary part of this after they left for the day this woman Lindsay scanapicho i know i'm butchering her last name she sat with her staff and they were like apparently they were just like shell-shocked they were like what the fuck just happened who were those two rhode island guys and they decided to write an email to like a bunch of reps in rhode island um they said your guys are lacking competence it's embarrassing they are banned from the Bach building. They're like, ne- these two guys got like banned from Philadelphia. Philadelphia is like, you're never allowed. They back have to be the first people to get banned from the Bach building, right? Yeah. Mm. That's um, a feather that you put in your cap and call that. Yeah. Thing and also on. it's kind of tough to get banned from Philadelphia, given all the stuff that people <laughs> yeah. in Philadelphia right. do. So yeah. if you're getting banned, that's, that's saying something. But they're right like now, never yeah. allowed back in the building. And Rhode Island to its credit was like, I guess the whole state was so, we're like, we're so embarrassed. We're so sorry. We're so And everybody knows these. people there. So it's so, not like you're going to know these guys. Um, Patton is currently on paid administrative leave now. So I guess he's getting a free vacation out of it. And Thornson resigned from his job, but now he has a great job at the U.S. Treasury. So they both ended up losing their jobs, I guess, in a way, but they're still going to be fine. But I mean, Sorry, I just loved that story. I loved I think it. when that show, I think when this gets a little bit bigger, 
that guy's not going to be working at the U.S. Department of Treasury. U.S. Department of Treasury. No, it definitely just, not. And there was more things that didn't make this list, but she basically sent Rhode Island reps an email being like, here's what your guys did. Bing, 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 bing. Embarrassing. They're never allowed back. But um, once you get a little bit of that freedom, I think that, that you kind of want to, right? Like you get a little bit of you're put in the position of maybe you could do this. I think that's the natural, uh, like your natural inclination is to do that. But you you can't do it. You can't do it at all. It just mm-hmm. reminded me of like these two, like these two could be characters in the office who got a day trip and felt super important and like yeah. yep yes it just felt like something yeah. out of a sitcom so sorry Michael that was long, and Dwight but going up for it yeah i just no really love that story so well um, i think that applies to the next one good initiative for bad judgment like that goes to the next round too i'm i think that's very clearly good initiative bad judgment it might be the quintessential good yeah initiative, bad judgment. seriously can't blame them for trying you know <laughs> but it didn't they didn't execute it in the in the perfect way they didn't at all all right let's move on to the actual good initiative bad judgment um, I don't know about you, but I can't drink as much as I could in college without feeling like crap. Even just a few drinks has you feeling like crap these days. And in a world where we're being pulled in a thousand different directions, you can't afford to miss a day. More Labs created this nifty lifesaver of a drink called Morning Recovery that helps prevent rough mornings after drinking. Some more drinks have existed in Korea for a long time, but there were no options like it in the U.S. that worked. So... Their founder quit his job at Tesla to fix that and created Morning Recovery. It's super simple. All you have to do is drink one Morning Recovery while you drink or before you go to bed. It contains super herbs, vitamins, and minerals that help you bounce back. And a proprietary blend of electrolytes to rehydrate you. So you can have a fun night, feel good the next day, feel like a real human, and like you did when you were 21. They conducted a clinical study and users of morning recovery felt up to 80% better than those without morning recovery across various symptoms after drinking. So, if you want to feel better after a night of drinking, go to morelabs.com. That's morelabs.com and use code ZBT for 20% off your first order of morning recovery. morelabs.com. First up, there is a military scientist who was working on advanced propulsion techniques. No, wait, that's not the first one. What's the first one, Kate? Not also it? Oklahoma. Oh, yeah, Oklahoma. What do we got, Kate? So we have a gas station employee in Tulsa accused of asking a friend to find someone to rob the store so he could go home early, police say. I'm already saying good initiative, good judgment here. According to the <laughs> Tulsa Police Department, the investigation began when Isaiah Jones, the employee, reported that a man walked into the store, handed him a note that said, give me all your money or I will shoot you. Jones complied and the suspect left with all the cash. And and then Isaiah Jones like, I guess I can't work anymore. No more money in the till. Gotta go. Now, see, this is big time good initiative, bad judgment, because mm-hmm. something when this happens, an incident, you're only extending your day, buddy, because the cops are going to come. They're yeah. going to ask you questions. It's a whole mess. You know, instead of mindlessly doing your job, now you got to deal with people and, and really be on top of your game. It's such an annoying thing. This and this is wrong. another thing yeah. that could, this would have worked in 1987. It won't work yeah. now. You won't said, right where's now. the note? You don't have a note. And that's not a note you're throwing away if you get a note. You don't have yeah. a text. You don't have a call because they could trace all that stuff. This is a prime example of things you can never do now. Like this will um, never, ever work in a modern era. I do think, say your your company was going to the armory and it's 0, 300 and everyone shows up miserable and you're like, Gunny, you're not completing this. Somebody stole the guns last night. I guess we got to go <laughs> home. You'd be a hero. Yeah, I think that would work too. Yeah. Like, oh, well, I guess uh, they're going. Good gone. initiative, bad judgment on that one. You yeah, gotta... I agree. That's a good yeah. initiative, bad judgment. What about number two? All right, Illinois, a 62-year-old man is facing firearm charges after authorities say he accidentally shot himself in the leg in his sleep while dreaming that he was defending himself against an intruder in his home. This is like a wet dream for hardos. Yeah, this is like a legit wish a MF or wood. Look at me. Yeah, uh, Mark DeCara of Lake Barrington had a 357 Magnum. That's um, a big caliber too, my Goodness. around 9 50 p.m <laughs> boom right in the leg he thought he was shooting an intruder it was just himself um hit, hit himself in the leg woke up from his dream uh, realized uh oh that wasn't a dream and by the way i don't know if i buy that story you think they was playing with the gun doing a little goofing i think he, he didn't want to seem like an idiot i think he was like practicing or something embarrassing i don't yeah. think who holds who sleeps with a 357? Right. It's not I like that's a small gun. For a second. 
Um, he lost a significant amount of blood. <laughs> yeah. And it went through his leg and lodged himself in his bedding because he could have killed other members of his family if that went through the wall. Oh, yeah. or that That's through. going through the wall for sure. So, yeah, not great. I'm going to say bad initiative, bad judgment, because I don't believe his story. I yeah, agree. Yeah, I don't either. I think he's being a liar, too, which also makes him an integrity violator with bad judgment. Even worse. Not great. All right, last one. All right, last one. Tell the little captain that we put three bombs on the Miami flight, a distorted voice said in an audio message sent to an airline worker in Argentina. Check the airplane because it's going to blow up into a thousand pieces. 270 No matter what happens next, <laughs> that's bad initiative, bad judgment. I mean, in a modern era, calling in a fucking bomb, bomb on threat a on a plane. Nope, can't do it. You think we're not going to be able to trace that shit? Are you kidding? Like, are you... So 270 mm. passengers are on this mega plane and they all have to get uh, rushed off the Aerolinas Argentinus plane just minutes before the flight was set to take off from Buenos Aires. Bomb squads and the emergency response team are all over the plane looking for explosives, but turned out to be a hoax by a jealous flight attendant who worked for the airline and wanted to stop her ex-boyfriend from flying to Miami with his new girlfriend. You know, it'd be a delicious oh. podcast. Hmm. Tales from the air. Like if you yeah. have like flight attendants, oh, you yeah. know they see so much stuff. Tales from the air would be incredible, man, because they do hookups. What was that? The flight attendant, right? That was the show yes. on HBO. There are certain yeah. groups yeah. that I think because of the nature of the job, like, yeah, military people hook up with each other all the time because yeah. if you're in such a bubble, you don't have anybody else. Yeah, mm -hmm. flight attendants and pilots and all that shit. You have such weird schedules. Of course, that's and your you're fault. stopping in up. amazing cities. Bartenders and yeah. restaurant workers—they're always working late. Of course, they're going to be. There's certain groups, CrossFit gyms. They're going to be fucking man. International <laughs> flight <gyms>. attendants, <laughs> man. You know that you got to be a straight up freak to be doing. They they learn so many moves internationally. You tell me that you stop in Paris and Amsterdam every other week and you don't know how to absolutely finger blast the brains out of somebody? Come on. Mm. You're going to be like on. prints on that thing. Yeah, playing know? it like a harp, like an old school Chaucer lute is what you're playing. Speaking of international, I got a surprise. Oh, Good initiative, anyway. bad judgment. After. What is it? Go ahead. Oh, all Ooh. right, well, I'll just go. Oh, okay. Ready? Good initiative, yeah. bad judgment. Did you guys yeah. hear about um, Meghan Markle and Prince Harry? married right that well that but okay, so yeah. they get their, their podcast they had a podcast got canceled after 12 episodes Ca came out today they got Credit to us. we got way more than them way more yeah. successful. more than 12 way more than 12 came out today apparently some of the interviews on the show were done by people on their staff and then they would edit megan markle's questions into the episode oh, so their staff would do the interview Millie Vanilli then, of the podcast game yes yes so is that good initiative, bad judgment, or what do you guys got? I How think that's hard a... is it to take an hour and just talk? To, like, wait, why would they do that? Who See, to probably because they're shitty persnickety. people. I think that's persnickety. Like you do that like because you work. think you're better than other people. Like yes. you don't you don't want to talk to them. Yes. I yes. think that that is absolutely an I integrity can't violation. Stand Meghan Markle. Just Sorry seems to like say, a lot more work. Oh, I like Meghan Markle because I like I've been watching Suits. Oh, Suits is great. Don't get me wrong, liked Suits, but she fell off for me after that. Yeah, I it's don't weird like knowing her that Markle. she's like a royal now, watching her in Suits. She's yeah. so pretty that I think she could bully me, so I'm, I'm gonna keep liking her out of fear. <laughs> yeah, she's one of those people where even if you don't want to like her, she's so attractive and charming, like how she comes off that you would like her whenever you. She's want. like because Regina I George. Would talk shit on her, but in person, yeah. I'd be too afraid to. Yeah, I'd be like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, she's very pretty. I don't yeah. want to speak right now. Yeah, hot people. All right, so what do we have for the rest of it? What's the last part of this one? Um, basically, the caller, the person was na their name's Carbone. They were in a five year relationship with a male flight attendant, and they worked together a lot on s similar flights. And they had just broken up, and he started a new relationship and was working on the flight. And the new girlfriend was a passenger on that flight. So they were probably going to, he's like, Hey, I'm going to Miami for a couple of days. Why don't you, I'm, I'm do, going for work. Why don't you hop on the plane? We'll go together kind of thing. Um, they were going to spend a few days in Miami. So all of this so far, bad initiative, bad judgment. I think we can all agree on that. And then the last paragraph here, Kate makes it even worse. The final messages between the mother and daughter came just after Carbone was arrested. Um, so this woman is also a mother who's doing this crazy call. And, daughter, and I, daughter, I think I cut this part out. She did this on her daughter's phone. 
Oh. So she called in the bomb threat, did all that stuff on her daughter's phone. The daughter didn't know about it. The daughter was getting calls from like the Argentine version of the FBI, like what's going on. So then she had to text her mom and her mom was like, yeah, kind of lay low, sending it all on <laughs> text message that they can all get anyway. Just like, I'm sorry, people are not smart enough. Listen, dumb, aside from man. the fact that it's wrong to commit crimes, you're not going to get, most people won't get away with crimes these days. There's too much technology out there. You're not going to cover all your tracks. Just stop. Stop what trying to that crimes. kid in that situation. Like, what the fuck? I know. It was like that oh. one story in North Carolina where the dude was on uh, trial for double murder of his wife, and they found him at, like, the kennels on his property. And he made up oh, this yeah, elaborate the, the story. The yeah, he, yeah, he made yeah. up this elaborate story. And they could tell where you are based on pings of your cell phone. Right. He's yeah. like, oh, you're here. Oh, I was here. No, you weren't. Like, how? How, dude? Like the guy that's the Idaho killer. And he's like, oh, no, I was going to school in Washington. Well, then why do we have you in the neighborhood eight times over the last month? Like, how do you, you can't get away with anything. How do you do it? Do it's it, just man. not a good society to be killing people. You just got to come yeah. to that realization. Things aren't the way that they used to be. All right, let's move on to some save rounds and alibis. Today's show is also brought to you by our friends at Telemind. Telemind is a mental health solution that specializes in serving our military community. With a team of experienced and compassionate clinicians, Telemind offers accessible and confidential therapy and psychiatric sessions online, making it easy for service members, veterans, and their families to get support they need no matter where they are, whether it's coping with PTSD, anxiety, depression, or any other mental health challenge, Telemind is committed to providing military members with the resources that they need to thrive. A good example of that is that I, I love my provider. Her name is Stacy, and she's been my provider for about a year and a half, two years. Something like that has really helped me navigate some of my mental health uh, issues that are involving medication, that part of the house. And she's done a great job. I hate leaving her when I moved to Illinois, but a lot of you probably know that you can't practice in every single state. Stacy doesn't have a license to practice in Illinois. So I had to find a different one. I called Telemind and was like, hey, I'm moving here. Here's my new address. And they said, great. When do you run out of medication for this one? And I said, I run out of medication after I move probably around 60 to 70 days whenever it's actually done. They said, cool. So in about 45 days now, I have an appointment with my very first Illinois provider so that things I'll have a seamless transition. And if you are in the psychology game or in the psychi psychiatric game, you know how difficult it is to even find a provider at this point. But being able to leave states, have one already lined up in the same exact fashion and way that I do now is an unbelievable benefit. And I, I did it for myself and I did it for my older daughter. It's going to be fantastic that that's one less thing that we have to worry about when we move because Telemind has licensed and qualified clinicians who have experience working with military families and veterans alike. Telemind has flexibility of scheduling options, allowing members to look at times that are convenient for them wherever they are. You can take the first step on your journey by visiting Telemind, which is T-E-L-E-M-Y-N-D.com or call 866-991-2103 to get started. Let's move into some save rounds and alibis. Katie Beach, we'll start with you. Yeah, I'm down the Jersey Shore. I'm in my Aunt Jill's in a spare bedroom right now. Uh, but yeah, it's our family beach week. Um, is it early this dad? year? Have I mentioned yeah, it seems earlier. 13? Wait, wait, what is that, Kate? What was that? I said, have I mentioned my dad's one of 13 yet? Have I? Yeah, no. yeah you've no. casually mentioned that, yeah. <laughs> have I? Um, but yeah, yeah we always, it's always the last full week in June. Okay. So because next week's the cutoff, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Um, but we basically run out an entire neighborhood. And normally I'm drunk all week, but not anymore. Times have changed, so. Mm, yeah, usually whenever you would do this, you would come back and you'd have like, dead face a little bit your eyes would be a little sunken because you could tell you were dehydrated for a full last week while also getting sunburned i'd have marlboro voice a little bit of the marlboro voice <laughs> what have you been on. doing just ripping cigs all week mike but i gotta tell you this is where being a marine comes in handy mm -hmm. because our family's staying on literally it's a trailer on stilts by the bay is it the so same good. one what? Oh, yeah. That's the same one Cash was conceived. Yeah. Conceived in. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Which is very weird for the whole family. Yes. Yeah. But Cash um, right here, buddy. Right here. <laughs> the whole house is on stilts over the water. And it's just like a one room shanty with a loft in it. Like that's mm -hmm. whatever. Um, And all the boats that go by pointed out and they're like, look at that goofy little house. And we're like, we're poor. <laughs> and then it's very <laughs> 
Um, but we're poor. Having Help a me, I'm in a house that's <laughs> completely over the water. You got it. Complacency. You can't get complacent. That's Two, right. Lugging a wagon with baby pool. I'm bringing a baby pool down every day and toys and all this crazy crap down to the. It's like 50 pounds of gear I'm lugging. Like well, how, where do you get the water from? Like, so you put a pool inside the ocean? No, I take buckets and I walk back oh and forth. Oh, my. Like yeah, thousand. back and forth. God. Dude, what? this this takes so what you got to do, dude. Millennial kids. What? No, nah, chaps. No, 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 dude. This is just how it is down the shore, man. I can remember what? walking yes, up dude. to the beach. My dad would have like six chairs on this hand. Why? Four in this hand. Because that's what you do. You go that's at 9 a.m. You set up shop, you're there until the sun goes down. So you need everything. Now, sometimes you have a house you can get back to on a short walk. You need to use the restroom or if you want to get something to eat. But that's just the way it is. You know they're there for something deck. else. Something this is else. my pooping house. My Aunt Jill's house is right off the path. So it's the family pooping house down the shore. Okay. Comes in I'll here tell too. you what, though. I can't wait to be that guy that has to carry everything up to the beach for the day. It's awesome. So yesterday I was walking. Oh, oh, oh buddy, that shit sucks, man. Like no. you say that it's one of those things where Kate needed five onesies. Like once you're actually doing it, that shit is totally because you're exhausted after you leave because normally you're sitting around hanging out with beers and doing all that kind of stuff. You're monitoring all kinds of sandcastle building. You're telling them come back every two seconds. You're running up and down because they want to go check out the tits of somebody else because they're like, whoa, somebody else is in a bathing suit. Let me go check that out. It's the whole thing. And then you're sandy and you got to carry it through the I gotta sand. I got to tell you, if, you were, you, ra- if awesome. you were raised in it, I yeah. was walking around in a skimpy bikini, visibly pregnant, not married, like a <laughs> whore yesterday. Real <laughs> Jersey <laughs> Shore shit. Buffalo chicken cheese steaks. I walked right in the store in my bikini with my son in my arms covered in sand. And I just, I, I walked all around town like that. Give just me a hoagie, extra hot mayo. And I just felt like I was coming full sir. It felt like I was connecting deeply with my my roots. Uh, yeah. and it just felt great. Yeah. Wait, <laughs> I didn't get a chance to watch that video you sent over. Did somebody dig cash a hole? I was just telling you guys, I went to drop my son off at the beach this morning to come back up to do the show, thinking somebody would be there to watch him. But it was just a long line of empty chairs. Everyone's getting their pork roll, egg and cheesers this morning. Mm. Everybody, you set up, you establish a line and then you dip out. But yep. anyway, uh, okay. Communal that's living. My- Mm-hmm. No, no, no. But I mean, digging a hole. That's that's part of going to. The yeah, beach I with agree the with that. Kids. Well, because Dude. I'm such a ginger baby. Whenever I went to the beach, even as a grown man, when I went to Hawaii a couple of years ago, I bury myself like in the sand. If I'm sitting on the beach, straight up bury my legs so I can't get sunburned. And then the only thing that'll be out is like my neck. And I'll have like a little mm-hmm. bit of towel because my yeah. whole family are like you guys where they want to spend all day. I can't do that as like a redhead yeah. person. I just can't do it. And you Wait, do so- once you set up shop, you go get what like food you need for the day, and you are there for like twelve hours. We were there yesterday from like sunrise to sunset, besides lunch. Like yeah. just yeah, it's a um, good experience. Best time of the day, in my opinion, is like four four thirty when when a lot of people have left for the day and the sun's starting to go down. That's the best time. Yeah, uh, but Kate, big shark season, that shark season right there. <laughs> Kate, is this is this a week you think even once you move you'll have to come back for? Always, yeah, I'll never miss yeah. it. Yeah, because yeah. I remember when I didn't live in Jersey, that was the part I missed the most, I think. One of the parts that I missed the most was the shore. Um, yeah. So I, I have to imagine you'll you'll come back, sure. All oh, right, Cons, yeah. what about you? Um, I'm a sucker for history, as we know. I played at a course yesterday that the, the club was started by John Jacob Astor and J.P. Morgan because the oh, club they belong to. I thought you were going to say John to. Jacob Jacob Me yeah, too. No. Um, and uh, th- their club they belong to like got too crowded, so like f this, let's start our own club. So they made a new club. So I played golf there. That was nice. Um, have either of you yet? To- oh, actually, I'll save that for another uh, another time. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> my buddy, um, my buddy was at a wedding on Saturday, and it was at Trump Bedminster. And sure enough, President Trump happened to be there playing golf. So I, he said, "Did he get to go to the bathroom? Did he check out anything in the bathroom? Or no? <laughs> oh no, no, no. He was he was there. He wasn't playing golf. He was there for the wedding." Uh, um, I've actually, I've been there for a wedding. It's, it's actually very nice. Um, but the president took a, a picture with the, um, bride and groom. So that got me thinking if you could have one person crash your wedding and actually like come to the wedding, not just like one picture and leave. If you could have one person dead or alive, come to your wedding, who would you have? Well, I don't Immediately, want Immediately, go ahead, Kate. 
Weird Al, and he would have written a silly song about me. <laughs> okay, that's a good answer. Yeah, that is a good one. I'm torn. Like I, I'm gonna cut mine off. Like people that I really enjoyed growing up, it would be I'd have to really think hard between Will Ferrell and Jack Black, because either one good would choices. be good choices. Jack Black singing wedding songs would be yeah. amazing. True. Yeah. How about you, so Tom? Mine is along those lines, chaps. I would love if Chris Farley showed up. Oh yeah, because you know he's I getting after it on the dance floor. You. Yeah, yeah. He that's why I said dead. deads are alive. No, I said, that's why I said dead or alive. Yeah. Oh, oh, dead or alive. Oh, okay. Yeah. Imagine I was just going this whole time thinking Chris Farley. I thought Costa was going to go current too, events yeah. and go with the Unabomber. I mean, you show up as with the Unabomber as your plus one. Mm. There's some combos mm. going on. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So, all right. Yep. That's all I got. Um, I had Father's Day yesterday, and what an yeah. absolute delight having children who actually care about you. It's nice. <laughs> like, I don't know why my dad did it another way. Like, Father's Day is fucking sick if you're good at being a dad. I got to go to Top Golf with the squad. And I think one of the best things about taking your kids to Top Golf, especially at my kids' age, well, not necessarily Kelsey, but McCartney's age, they think that whatever you do, it's fucking amazing. Like, yeah, God, not supposed to cuss. They think it's amazing. Whenever I go up there and I'll hit the golf ball. I mean, I don't hit, I'm not like a world beater. I'll hit like 250, 275 if I really get a hold of it. Um, but McCartney thinks that's like a missile shot because they're hitting like 25, 50 yards. And then I come in with the driver and smash it. And my whole family's like, oh my God. It's the only time I haven't felt like that sense of accomplishment where people watch your physical attributes and what you do probably since I was in the Marine Corps. Like it's yeah. been a long time since that happened. So that was enjoyable. And then coming back and just spending a low key day after having like four or five showings every day for the last week and a half, spending some time at the pool with my family, just listening to some music and chilling and having a good time. It was awesome, man. Like it just reminds you why being a dad is good. Two questions for you. Number one, because obviously I missed the cutoff this year. So hopefully, you know, I'll, barely, I'll get it next though. year. Yeah. Barely, barely. You'd be, I think this is the kind of situation where if it was kindergarten, you know, like, yeah, if you're between August yeah. and October, they're like, I right. don't know. They got to do a little screening. I think you cut, you're getting close to the screening of passing into kindergarten. Yes, absolutely. But I kind of like it this way. Cause like if, if she wasn't around for mother's day, but made it for father's day, I'd feel bad that I got father's day and I was going to get mother's yeah. day. That'd be, that wouldn't be cool. But so I wonder, cause I look at, you know, all different things on the internet and friends and what have you, do you think chaps? And I would ask Nick if he was here, but is it good to be, and maybe not good is the right. Do you prefer to do whatever you want on father's day? Or do you prefer to be with your children who made you the father and, and be around them and, or do you like to have a balance of both? Like, do you want to be left alone like, or no, be with the I kids? No, I want to be with my kids. Like, I, yeah. one, because Annalise is such a good mom that typically, like, the good parent conversation goes to her. Like, the yeah. <laughs> if somebody's going to get, like, accolades about being a parent, it's rightly Annalise more so than yeah. me. So when the attention's on me, I'm like, well, isn't this fucking nice? <laughs> What's going on here? What do we have? You're making me breakfast. This is incredible. Uh, yeah. But this, I think this is the first Father's Day that I didn't actually grill on Father's Day, which was kind of nice too. We came in. Oh, and yesterday is set up fucking perfect. The sports gods did Dude. dads a favor, man. Like I had all day to go golf with my kids, to come back, spent like three or four hours with them in the pool, got out watched the show with Annalise, and then at 5.30 was the tee-off time for the lead, yes. like, of the tournament. And it was perfect. So at the end of the day, it was long. I came down to my office, turned it on, and had a couple beers by myself. Overall, probably the best Father's Day I've had in a decade or so. At yeah, least. I'll say that about uh, golf, especially majors, chaps. When it's smack dab in the middle of the day, it's kind of a bummer, especially the U.S. Open, like summertime. It's nice outside. I want to play golf myself or be outside or be at the pool or something, but I also want to watch the golf. So I guess, you you know, in a perfect world, you get a setup where you can do both. But I enjoyed that, too, when it's on the golf, West Coast. Golf is the only sport where it's better on the West Coast for a yes. major if you're on the East Coast. The only mm -hmm. one. Basketball is way better on the East Coast for everybody. But golf, when you had, it was damn near prime time golf yesterday. Incredible. Yeah, it was excellent. Yeah. You got your whole day and then still got to watch. But so then my other question, because I'm curious, because I think everybody does differently. What do you do to get, when you have to get out of your house for showings, what have you been doing? 
I mean, I hate to say it on a military podcast, but thinking about killing myself, honestly, (laughs) it's just, it's terrible, dude. I got two kids. Kelsey's 18. Well, she will be 18 in two days. God damn. Oh, wow. She'll she'll be 18 in two days. So she's never around. Like she has, she has a car. She's gone all the time. So I don't even notice where she's at. I just look at her location on her phone. And as long as it's not downtown in the shitty area, I'm like, all right, I guess that's what she's doing now. But with Cardi, Got to get Cardi's, make sure that Cardi's iPad is charged at every second of the day. And that motherfucker needs to be at a, that needs to be at a (laughs) hundred every single day when they get ready to go anywhere. We have to have fresh Netflix shows downloaded so we're ready to go. The biggest pain is because right now, today we have a heat advisory. It's going to be 106 degrees today with no, not like real feel. Real feel will probably be 111, 112, something like that. I cannot take an 11 year old dog outside anywhere in that time period. So we're, we're having to locate like dog friendly malls, like the ones that are, that allow dogs. I've spent so much time. We took Spork to Petco and we just walked every aisle. (laughs) We spent so much time sitting in the kids section of Barnes and Noble the last couple. If you want to hang out with me, just come to Barnes and Noble at Lock and Terra. (laughs) I'm probably going to be up there sitting on the little, a uh, bench that looks like a tree trunk. <laughs> That's where I'm going to be. <laughs> me, Gus, and Baby Dale hanging out. But there's a Starbucks in there, so every time Baby Dale and Gus get to go, they get a little pup cup, and they've been oh, loving nice. that. But now we've recently shifted in. We started on Saturday, taking Gus and Dale to like doggy daycare. Um, one because they have a good time and they get tired, and two, we don't have to sit with them in Tahoe for like three hours. We have six sure. showings on a Monday. Six. Oof. Oof. We've had like yeah. 25 and no offers. Nice. it'll happen it'll happen for sure but yeah i'm just thinking like it's so hot and all you want to do is sit in that pool of yours and you can't i can't that's why <laughs> yesterday was nice i we haven't even been because you don't want to mess anything up if you have a show right. that comes in last right minute. sorry now nah, i'm just picturing like <laughs> if you people come in for their showings and you're like stepbrothers you're just in the pool in your underwear like i hey. actually think it's good no you know like if you're People are coming to check out the house like, this could be you. I'll yeah. even leave all these umbrellas. <laughs> if you <laughs> if you want to come hang out, feel free. Um, we'll be back next week with a full-ass show. Um, I guess we had a full show this week, too, so sound the retreat. 